Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Pascal Vandenbusch. I am the Secretary General of ECIA, and I would like to welcome you to this webinar on climate change. For those who do not know about ECIA, so ECIA is the European Confederation of Institute of Internal Auditing, representing 34 national institutes as a members and 55,000 internal auditors in Europe. Our main activity is to advocate the profession towards the European regulator, but also sharing views and best practices across Europe on hot topics like the webinar of today. Climate change is for sure a very hot topic for all of us as a citizen. Uh, the Belgian people were quite happy to have 25 degree end of October in Brussels, but we know that some people in another location in the world had a lot of difficulties. For organization, it's really time to take climate change seriously in their business model and unfortunately, I was reading last week a report from the European Central Bank about the fact that they have checked the preparation of the banks in Europe regarding the management of the climate change. And the conclusion is that there is still a long way to go. Uh, the, the main comments were about integrate, integrating climate change in the risk management, in the strategy and in the governance. So we believe as internal auditors that we also have a very important role to play. And that's the main topic for the webinar today. We have the pleasure to welcome very interesting speakers and to have as moderator, Michele Variale. Ciao Michele, thank you for your time and for being with us today. Michele is currently the Chief Audit Executive of Telepass Group. He has a very strong experience in internal auditing in various organizations, amongst them PwC, General Electric, and many others. And he has also made a lot of publication about climate change. I think I can say that it's one of his best baby. So, Michele, the floor is yours. Um, thank you very much. First of all, let me check if my uh, if you can hear my voice. And um, I'll start saying, OK, OK, so uh, good morning, buenos dias and bonjour and buongiorno, everybody. It's really great to be here today. Um, I'm really honored that the CIAA has invited me to moderate the session today. Uh, we have hundreds of uh, auditors connected, and this is clear an indication of how the topic of climate change and environmental sustainability um, auditing is, is interesting, is interesting for the profession across countries now. I will personally do my best to good, make a good job in facilitating the discussion, even though my job is a different one. I'm an auditor myself. So um, I, I try to play to play the game. Um, I have been talking for 30 seconds now. And uh, in the last 30 seconds, Antarctica has seen 150,000 tons of ice melting. Um, we are talking roughly about the weight of almost 600 statues of liberty in 30 seconds so climate change is there climate change is there and there's an impact on many risk profiles for organizations and the ability to properly govern <clears throat> environmental social and governance objectives is becoming more and more a driver to protect enterprise value as a ESG factors impact more and more aspects like brand perception, uh, the operations, the supply chains, reporting obligations, uh, access to liquidity uh, and people, uh, strategic, um, strategic decision making. Um, so we know climate change is uh, 
is an aspect of ESG. I kindly ask Pascal, if possible, to quickly go to um, next slide where I will give a, a quick a quick uh, snapshot of the perfect storm that we are navigating through. It's um, a moment of um, incredible challenges for uh, for all of us, uh, executing internal audit duties in a highly, highly challenging environment of geopolitical tensions, supply chain pressures, cyber attacks, uh, shortages of material, liquidity, inflation rising, and transportation bottlenecks and distribution. This is the environment we operate in today, which is not a good environment for us as human beings. It's an exciting environment for us as auditors. If we move to next slide, um, I'd like to point out that in Europe, we carry out every year a study that is called Risk in Focus, where we are asked as auditors, how do we see key themes uh, evolving? Um, how do we see key matters for the profession uh, to focus on? And how do we act against those key themes? Now, my intention is not really to go through uh, the whole detail of the publication, but I still encourage everyone to reach out and, you know, download it and go through it. Uh, but I would like to use some of the information in the Risk in Focus publication to try crystallize a few thoughts uh, that hopefully will be useful as we develop our conversation with the panel of speakers that we have today. Um, so there's really four key points that I um, grasped uh, by going through the risk in focus results. And let me elaborate on the point number one. Point number one is that the results of the risk in focus highlight climate change and environmental sustainability as one of the hot topics for the profession. The perception of the importance of climate change has almost tripled in the last four years. Can we move to next slide to talk about the second big point that I see coming out? Point number two is we see climate change now being the in the top six. Top six is ranking six in the risks in the in the rank of risks facing organizations. Or at least that's the perception of European auditors. Uh, but in three years, in the next three years, climate change will be in the top three. That's what we forecast as a profession. Can we move to the next slide to crystallize other two important points um, for us to consider? Point number three is that there is an evident dystonic between, uh, well, in comparing the, the perception of risk that we have when we look at climate change and the time we spend on that risk. Maybe it will be rough, but it may be effective as well. If I say that my key point is that we do not invest currently sufficient time on this matter. And point number four is a bit scary. Auditors across Europe expect that you know we will invest a lot more time in tackling climate change, uh, environmental sustainability in the future. Okay, we forecast to more than double, more than double our efforts in three years' time. So, <clears throat> long story short. If we move here to next slide, uh, I suppose we can all agree on a few things. 
climate change is something we uh, should be thinking about. Um, we know that. Uh, we know that we need to do more as auditors. Uh, we know that we need to move. Uh, now the question is getting, getting to the point of a better degree of maturity. Getting to the point of a better degree of maturity. And this, to me, is linked with the how of things. Um, how can we make it happen? How how can we how can we act? Um, and this is really the objective of today's conversation. Uh, we we want to know how can we play a role on the way our organizations treat climate change risk. We want to know how can we factor climate change in our audit plans. We want to know how can we play an advisory role and we want to know how can we ensure we have the right skill set in place. So these are topics that we will debrief uh, uh, shortly with our panelists. Um, let me say clearly and let me point out very clearly that uh, the discussion may not necessarily lead to firm answers. But I expect it to be thought provoking for all of us as we go back to our daily duties. Now, before I introduce uh, the speakers we have today, I will propose to the audience to respond to a live poll that is uh, uh, available here on screen. Um, the question is, how do you currently audit climate change in your organization? We will give some, some time for you to respond. This is very important for myself, uh, Roberto, Svilena and Alberto to drive the discussion uh, and to get a feeling on uh, the current state of art uh, in the wider audience across Europe. Um, it's, um, it's very clear, even though the, the, not the poll is still open, maybe I will try to comment this slide, that the vast majority of us in the meeting today, in the webinar today, we do not currently play a role or audit climate change in our organization. Um, some, some of us, some of us do play an assurance role. Some of us play an advisory role. But vast majority is in line with what I was saying just before that yeah, there is a, a there is something to to be made to increase our level of maturity and our uh, action action to the point okay uh, let me now introduce you to the speakers that we have today i'm very glad uh, that they've given availability to join this uh, ECIIA webinar i will start by welcoming Svilena Whitney hi Svilena Svilena holds um, 20 years of experience in financial services, uh, in insurance as well, in large multinational groups. Um, she um, is now head of audit for Generali, based uh, in Bulgaria. Uh, she has been a member of Generali's global ESG community since uh, its first steps. So, um, good morning, Svilena, and welcome. Good morning, Michele. Thanks very much for inviting me to this mm -hmm. super relevant hot topic, and um, I'll be happy to share uh, our views on it. Good, thanks. Um, also, I will uh, welcome Roberto Lombardi. Roberto uh, is the International Senior Director for Internal Audit and Sustainability of GESS. Um, Guess is a global lifestyle brand operating globally 
and beyond his responsibilities of internal auditing in Europe and in China, Roberto is also in charge of the global sustainability and ESG team at GAS. And his duties include also the accountability of the global ESG reporting for his company. Ciao Roberto, benvenuto. Ciao Michele, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you you and the ECCIA for the invitation. Okay, good. I will also uh, try to check if we have um, uh, Alberto Ferrero on the meeting, um, who is our third panelist. I know he had a few issues in, uh, in joining the room. Um, I will check, I will ask Pascal to check if uh, Alberto is in the room, uh, but in the meantime that we make this check, this verification, I will uh, start saying that Alberto has more than 30 years of experience in internal auditing in large multinational groups. Hola, hola Alberto. Well, I, hola, I, apologize. Yeah, I, think... I apologize for, for this. No worries, no worries at all. Uh, so I was uh, introducing you saying, you know, more than 30 years of experience you bring to the table. Um, you, uh, Alberto has initiated his career in banking, then he moved to energy. And in the last 15 years, um, Alberto has been leading the internal audit operations at Grupo Ferrovial in Spain, operating in highways, airports and infrastructure. Um, I really loved when uh, Alberto told me that, uh, you know, he feels his job is delivering audit value, uh, adapting his work to the needs of his organization. So really welcome and bienvenido Alberto. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, very good. So. Um, again, I thank you all for the availability that you've made today. We have seen that uh, in the audience, we have in the room today hundreds of people from different parts of Europe. We have seen that uh, the vast majority of auditors do not really play a role in auditing climate change or uh, advising on climate change in their organization. So we will have a round table to debrief a few topics to properly influence a next step for the profession. As a ground rule for the round table that I will moderate, uh, I will ask all the three of you to be very open in providing your points of view on the matters that we will debrief uh, to make your responses concise and we love interaction. We love interaction uh, and comments on speakers' comments. So let's try to make this pretty interactive. Okay, so let's start with the, with the first point uh, to you. Um, there is a lot of debates currently going on on the role that internal audit should play on ESG and consequently on the role that we should play on climate change and environmental sustainability. Now, in a professional environment of evolving maturity, as we have seen, uh, without structured professional frameworks to rely upon, uh, we may see different approaches by audit team and different companies. Uh, so I suppose the audience will be interested in understanding the role that you play in your organization regarding climate change and environmental sustainability. Uh, so really, the question is, how do you support the board? How do you support audit committees and management in relation to climate change risk? I will ask, I will kindly ask Alberto to uh, to take this. Thank you very much. Uh, I mean, the, the answer to this question is not an easy one, and I, and I think that it's, it's there is not a one fits all type of solution. My suggestion here is uh, try to understand what your company expects from climate, from climate change. What do they see as climate change? I can tell you that initially we thought of it on a negative, on a reactive way, in the sense that climate change could uh, affect our operations. You mentioned we are in the in the transportation, roads, uh, airports business. So we looked at it as, as a way of preventing risk uh, 
And this is more related to the typical or more traditional uh, business continuity plans. However, uh, and now this, this has changed, and, and the concerns were greenwashing, uh, reputational image, disruption of operation, loss of revenue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This has changed lately. Now we, we see this as, a, as an opportunity. Uh, it can be really turn a, a risk into an opportunity because uh, this means you can do things to not just to react, but also to prevent or, or even to expand a new business model uh, that didn't exist before. No? The role that we play is different um, uh, depending on one of these two perspectives. On the, in the first one, we would play a more traditional assurance role, checking that there's something and that is being complied with. However, in the, in the second, with the second approach, it's more, it's more uh, related to advisory, forward-looking, forward-looking, and I can tell you that much more difficult because we are looking at hypotheses. We are not, there is not even a, a checklist with which to audit that, a working program, uh, which, sorry, you were to say? You, you were making a great point, uh, which, which is a pretty mature way of looking at risk management. In other terms, we always say that, you know, risk uh, is a phase of, uh, of the metal. There's another phase which we call opportunity. And to be fair, it's also in my organization, Telepass, which is providing, uh, faci facilitating payments uh, solutions for sustainable mobility. Climate change is also now being looked at as an opportunity for us to expand new business. Uh, so it's very interesting to to get your perspective and bring to the table that yeah you know there's there's a risk there there's protection to be made there's also oh, business developments opportunities around this uh, so I will ask maybe Svilena what's your what's your perspective on the role that you play in supporting board and audit committee in management on the topic. Yeah, sure. It was very interesting to listen to Alberto, what he has to share, uh, because um, uh, this is something, uh, let's say, relatively new, hot, uh, developing. There is a lot of regulation going on, so a lot of eyes are on the progress development of uh, what is happening in terms of regulation, but also the board and uh, what their promise is made to the audience and to the greater uh, society because we see that the strategies of companies change and so we as auditors need to appreciate assess where does this lead us to uh, how will uh, the new pillar of the strategy change uh, the way the company is organized what will change in the governance is it going to be adequate to face uh, and to protect us from the new risks uh, that are upcoming with this new ambition, let's say. So the board will expect and the audit committee from us um, to, to give assurance on whether the ambition is being kept, what is the risk, what measures we take to keep us on, on the right track. Um, for this purpose, we've been quite active and established for two years now an ESG community uh, within the um, global audit function with which we study the impact on the processes, as well as, um, of course, starting from the strategy in order to know where we should look at next. It's a, it's a great, great, great point. And I also uh, would like to maybe underline uh, what you, Zilena, were saying. And you were saying there's a lot of pressure of new regulation coming in uh, and this clearly is increasing board's attention to the point. And going forward, we will be more and more asked to provide assurance on those matters. Uh, so it's maybe one point that we will uh, touch upon later on in the discussion. Can I ask uh, Roberto? Roberto, really, uh, it's pretty peculiar that you have a, a, a two-phase role of auditing and sustainability officer for the company. I think your perspective will be great in sharing with us what's your role, how do you support the board in relation to climate change risk? Thank you, Michele. Uh, you know, I look at the poll uh, and the results of the poll, I think that maybe a couple of options were missing. For example, uh, the answer both or uh, 
it depends on the time because you know climate change is one of the most dynamic risk areas for our profession uh, and the perception is changing and evolving in the time so on the basis of our of our experience we have played a different role at each different level of maturity the company went through with regards to sustainability journey and uh, let me say that my expectation is that uh, uh, our role will continue to change uh, um, and uh, uh, in, in the next year is uh, as this area is still very fluid and uh, we must be ready to adapt to the needs of our companies and to the fast evolving regulatory and business environment uh, and the pressure of company stakeholders. So being that said, we started to play an advisory role for our audit committee and for the management uh, many years ago. Our first achievement was to let them understand that climate change and I would say sustainability in general uh, was a real risk to face, but it was also an opportunity to make uh, our business uh, even stronger in the long term, as my colleague you said so far. So at the beginning, the goal was to help them to understand uh, how fast the risk was moving up in the agenda of all our peers in the industry and how they were starting to address it. So as internal audit, we provided our support to the sustainability team to prepare this kind of benchmark and we discussed the results with the board and the output of this project was basically the decision to start a sustainability journey by measuring our impact and by setting specific goals to reduce it. So as at the beginning of the journey, our role was a pure advisory role. It was basically the only thing to do at that time. Now, the, our approach is changed and now we are required to play also an important assurance role with the aim to continuously verify if the objectives of the company are still relevant, if they are in line with the expectation of the stakeholders, and if the underlying processes, controls, and data management are appropriate. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I think, you know, we have, we have gotten a grasp of how more mature uh, enterprises are now looking at internal audit, giving contributions, to, in different ways, in different ways, to the cl to the climate change risk management topic, uh, it was great the discussion that was made about risk and opportunity. Uh, it's clear from what Svilena was saying that there is a, a, an increasing pressure on assurance roles rather than advisory roles. But also from what Roberto was saying, we should be intelligent in understanding how to play certain roles according to the level of maturity of the enterprise we operate in. And I think it's great, a great point. Now, let's move to a central discussion point that I think would be pretty um, lively and useful for, for auditors across Europe. As we have done in the past for uh, different risk profiles, like cyber or um, third party risk. As a profession, we have debriefed, we have debriefed the topic, but we have really started taking action on the topic when we started factoring these matters in our audit plans. Because in the end, you know, the audit plan is a, a way to highlight the topics that we will focus on and that we will act upon in our companies. So we are all interested in understanding how do you treat climate change and environmental sustainability in your audit plan? Because there may be different ways of doing it. Do you perform thematic reviews? Do you go for second line reviews? Do you include uh, uh, climate change, environmental sustainability as an audit area of various process audits? Being a chief audit executive, you know, what's the, the, the views you can give to people that now are drafting their audit plans for next year on how to factor climate change in their audit plans? I will maybe ask uh, Svilena to, to answer first. Uh, thank you, Michele. So more or less, um, um, your next question is practically, what do you do 
to make sure that um, this topic, the climate uh, change, is integrated into, into our uh, audit plans. Well, uh, my first advice and consideration would be is uh, to be able to assess the impact of climate change on the specific business, the operations that you um, are auditing. You need to know, um, and I mean, if you're, if you're starting now, it takes some training first to understand the span uh, so that you are able to assess the impact on the specific operations. Um, what we have done uh, as a long uh, <clears throat> experience is um, to map the climate risk to all relevant uh, insurance processes, but also for other businesses such as asset management and banking, and to understand where the relevance is highest. Then uh, with certain uh, tools and methodologies, we arrive uh, at what is hot to audit. This means it requires immediate attention. Uh, and then what uh, can be done, let's say uh, next year or at a later stage. But in order to be adequate in this risk assessment phase, you need to clearly understand where climate change affects your operations, your business. Um, afterwards, we come to the audit execution and um, those processes that were selected and linked with, with, higher, um, with higher impact. And impact can be measured via different ways. Uh, it's not just about cash, it's about also reputation, imminency, uh, how quickly we need to do something, how quickly we need to provide this assurance and um, react. Mm -hmm. Uh, based on that, they get prioritized and then they're um, being during the execution, we pay attention to what are the mitigant factors, um, what policies are introduced, what is the organization that is um, created, uh, whether the uh, objectives are being achieved. Uh, what we find as added value is uh, a special uh, consideration section in the executive summary, and this is the bit that goes to the board and to the audit committee, where we draw their attention and focus them on uh, any issues that may be arising or provide our advice for, for further imp uh, improvements based on uh, what the purpose of the audit was. Okay, well, interesting. I mean, you are pointing out a pretty interesting element that maybe we should be crystallizing. You're saying that climate change and environmental sustainability can impact certain areas of the organization more than others. And as a result, our, our ability to properly assess the impact uh, can give us uh, a chance to properly prioritize and ensure the, that audit plans are, you know, focusing or targeting the risk exactly in those areas that matter more than others in a certain point at a certain point in time. I, I really like this. Can I ask Roberto maybe to elaborate a little bit more about your approach in factoring? climate change and environmental sustainability in your audit plans? Yeah, we we treat the climate risk uh, under two different drivers. So first of all, in all the audit project we perform, regardless if they are specific on uh, climate change or environmental risk or other audits, uh, we have included in our methodology a specific risk assessment focused on climate change potential impacts. Uh, if any, we include this assessment in our audit report. Why? Because our aim is to help the management to understand that the environmental risk of our business processes must be definitely considered in the business risk portfolio and uh, address it as a consequence. And they have not been considered anymore a kind of lateral risk or additional risk. They are risk with the same dignity of the other risk we manage every day. 
The second driver, and this is also our most relevant activity as internal audit, uh, and it's typical of our company, I don't want to say that is a best practice, uh, is about the sustainability reporting and data integrity. Uh, our company decided many years ago to implement a rigorous auditing and testing approach with regards to our sustainability reporting. And uh, the goal was to provide our stakeholders with verified, quantified, reliable assessment of our sustainability performance, including environmental sustainability performances. So to this aim, the internal audit team provided a contribution in the creation of the initial sustainability assurance framework that identifies all the KPIs that we consider needed to provide a complete accounting of our sustainability performance in accordance with the most important uh, sustainability standard like GRI or SASB. So we leveraged the knowledge and expertise of our sustainability teams and our internal audit teams by drawing from uh, the well-established and best practice of internal audit. Then the internal audit conducts also internal testing of all the sustainability metrics and uh, in order to verify that the KPIs are complete, are correctly mm -hmm. obtained, are accurate, and, and so on. And all these testing are documented and provided to our external uh, assurance provider for their examination. And I think that the contribution of the audit has been key for our company to be the first fashion company to get a reasonable assurance on, uh, on the sustainability report. It is, a, it is amazing to see how in the same organization internal audit can play a different assurance role in tackling climate change and environmental sustainability to what you were saying. Uh, yes, on the one side we can un identify if there's any risk elements to be focused on when we do every kind of audit more or less. And in addition to that, a more horizontal view when we look at our non-financial reporting side of things. Let me uh, ask Alberto. Alberto, what's your perception and what's the, the way you tackle and factor um, this method in your audit plans? Yeah, thank you. And well, I don't know to repeat my, what my colleague has said, but we do a combination of both. We, we look at this at every specific audit, and then we have some cross horizontal audits. However, and I, I want to be a bit, a bit disruptive here, I prefer the horizontal cross approach. And wh why do I say this? And I'm not talking about uh, reporting, as, 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 as you said before. I'm also talking about the, from in the investment commit and investment opportunities where about to go uh, and pay, uh, enter a new country, etc. The way I prefer this type of cross audits is because they give us a broader perspective of the group level. Climate change, as I said before, is, if you look at it as an opportunity, there may be a problem or an issue in an operation, in a specific operations, but you have, that doesn't make any sense if you don't look at the whole picture to see what others are doing to offset that. And, and you can only get that perspective by doing it on a cross, on a cross basis. Uh, I'm, I said before, investment committee, uh, also the deployment of the strategy, uh, we, we said before in, the, in our previous answer, this is a, a still maturing process. So the, the strategy has been defined as we move on. The reporting standards, the external reporting standard, standards, there's new almost one every, a new one almost every day. So we have to be continuously adapt to that. So the deployment of the strategy overall and the degree of completion, you can only see that on a cross, on a cross uh, basis. Then you have to look at the IT. Well, whether the IT is supporting, not just the reporting, it's just supporting the operations, the new operations that have been derived from climate change, business continuity, et cetera. No? So again, it's a combination of both, but with a personal bias to the cross of it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, let, me, let, let me maybe add a comment to what you were saying. Uh, in other terms, isn't it the same kind of approach that we were uh, pointing out when, uh, when um, we started looking at third party risk management? Yeah, you have third party risk management in every corner of the organization at every division level or unit level and whatsoever process level. But uh, uh, I think maybe we have all started by executing third party risk management cross reviews to really understand where, where the organization was standing, if the strategy objectives were properly you know, articulated 
and uh, and uh, and then now maybe as we evolve uh, on third party or cyber as well, we are uh, we are more more into auditing process level or unit auditable unit level. Um, uh, the the method. Let me add one thing here that I forgot. It's accountability. Uh, accountability is key in auditing this because there are many parties involved, internal parties, external parties. So ensuring there are no overlaps and ensuring there, is, there are no gaps is key. So accountability is also, and this is, it should be a look at it from a top-down approach. Wonderful, wonderful. I really love this discussion and I hope also the audience uh, does as, the, as I do. Now let's let's try to move to a different topic. Also conscious of time, clearly the value that we deliver as auditors sits with our ability to focus on topics that are relevant to the board. But we have also said that there's a uh, there's a, a maturity ladder that uh, not only internal audit has to work. Sometimes organizations need to work. Um, so in those situations where management is not focusing on uh, emerging risks like climate change, uh, yeah, it's clear management holds the responsibility of risk, but uh, we also have the responsibility of dialing a wake up call and say, hey guys, maybe you should be looking at this matter or considering this matter or at least ask the questions. Um, this implies an advisory role and you have all said you have played advisory role at the beginning of your journey. Um, now, what's the tips, what the suggestions that you can share with us in order to increase the internal audit influence towards the board, audit committee and management in raising and sub and ensuring that matter is considered? Uh, maybe I will ask uh, Roberto if you don't mind to, to start with this. Of what a, a tough question. Uh, ah. I, I think I have more to learn than sharing. <laughs> it's it's not easy, not easy at all. Um, anyway, I think that the the most important thing is to be credible. I know this is not an innovative tip, but uh, I think this is the base. And uh, in order to be credible people, a credible team, we must be well trained and informed about this topic. We cannot remain at a superficial level of knowledge. I think we are required to, to study, to integrate our background with specific knowledges uh, regarding whatever is related to the climate change and environmental risk. And uh, of course, this is not, not easy. Uh, the topic is very specific, it's very technical, but we must fill in this gap in order to elevate our capacity to talk about this in the proper way with a clear language and be practical, strict to the point. I think this is the expectation of our board and the management. And the, more the, the board must have the feeling that we know what we are talking about and uh, that we are much beyond a basic tick the box approach. <laughs> I think it's, uh, yeah. This, yeah. uh, it, it's good to say, not so easy always to, to achieve, but yeah, credibility is a key point. Alberto, what's the suggestions you can share? Well, I fully support that training, training is key. I mean, I, I take for granted that we are not experts on climate change. We are solitors. No, we are experts in area of every, I mean, We know a bit of everything, but we are not experts on anything. However, we can bring a lot of value by, as we are a, a pure corporate function, and we know how things are going on, at very different levels of the organization, very different countries, very different business units. We can learn a lot, but also we can teach a lot by sharing best practices, internal best practices. So my tip would be leverage on that. Leverage on, I mean, communications don't, are not as fluid in, in organizations as they should be. We can be a, a lever of change by sharing uh, best practices in, from more mature businesses to other, to other, to other more immature. Great, ways. great, great point. And I think internal audit is in a pretty unique position to observe in the same organization where do we have good practices that maybe we can expand or export to other corners of the organization, especially in large multinational groups. Svilena, what's your uh, point of view on this matter? 
I agree that this is probably the toughest question uh, on the agenda for, for today because uh, we are, uh, let's say, uh, okay, some of us uh, certain steps ahead, others are beginning uh, into this and uh, it is very important uh, uh, that we are heard and uh, then what are the methods to be heard? Well, to, um, as one colleague uh, mentioned once, to turn on the lights in the room. We generally know where things are and but if you turn the lights on with with uh, with data, with uh, um, some consolidated view or with some insights which are independent because they are from from auditors uh, and their internal auditors views also comparison uh, comparisons. Um, I think Roberto was uh, sharing about uh, KPIs then uh, definitely management is interested in how the competition is doing. Um, so uh, with bringing these um, summary points uh, to, to the board's table, we could actually provoke them to think, to act, and uh, to, to also follow and fully understand the promise they've made to, to society. Uh, it's a very, very, very good point. Yeah, very, very good point. Now, conscious of time, I, there's one other aspect that I would like to uh, to um, to discuss with you. Now, clearly, to properly tackle climate change and environmental sustainability, we need to ensure that we have the right fuel in the car. Okay, often right fuel means right skill set, and if we want to be credible, well, we need we need to ensure we have the right skill set. Now, I'm interested in understanding if you believe that we need special knowledge. Uh, skills for auditors involved in this matter. Do we need specialists or should we evolve the generalists? Um, let me ask the question to Svilena. Maybe Svilena, what's your what's your point of view on this? Well, it's uh, let's say a short and simple answer. It depends um, who you work for uh, and what uh, your company has um, has created as an ambition. But uh, if I have to go uh, in more detail and uh, elaborate on it to inspire, let's say, all the chiefs to think about it, whether we should uh, focus on training. Well, training is absolutely a must. Following a regulatory development is second must because you need to know what hits you as requirements to fulfill. And not every auditor is keen on, uh, let's say, compliance audits. So you need to identify the talent that actually is interested and um, even personally involved and believes in the daily contribution in, in everyday effort uh, towards climate change. Um, what is very important is how mature the organization is. I mean, do you have imminent things to audit? Is there imminent risk? Is it going? at such a speed that you need to catch up or is it something coming um, in the future but uh, you have to know the regulations because you may think it's in the future but actually to get there to be compliant in two years time because someone's still talking about it doesn't mean you have enough time and you need to prepare um, another thing um, i was thinking is that uh, if you need to audit kpis that are technical for example in production the, co the colleagues, the other panelists that are here are probably uh, better uh, at this, but uh, in order to be able to verify a technical KPI, for example, a specific amount of emissions or reduction in, in certain coefficient, um, you need to understand what it is made of, um, how, it's how it's been calculated. So maybe you do need some technical skills as well because you can't just say, yeah, it looks great, it reconciles. No, you need to understand if this reconciles, then what else should reconcile? What are the conditions? Yes. And for this, you need training. So it's a good, it's a, it's a great point, I think. Um, and you're, you're pointing out the importance of training, the importance of ensuring that we pick up the right people in the team to look at certain matters. Also, the fact that there's some level of specialization that from time to time may be required. Maybe, Roberto, what's your um, what's your suggestions or point of view on this topic? Yeah, I agree with uh, Svilen. I think the upskill of our teams uh, is a, a crucial point. And uh, I think we may need more specific skills and knowledge in our teams. Uh, uh, and it's not easy to address. But I 
also want to look at the opportunities we may have in the short term. First of all, I agree with Alberto when he says that uh, as internal audit, we already have some uh, technical uh, uh, knowledge that may be relevant starting from today immediately. So I think we are in a very good position to help the organization to move on in this journey. We our mindset is based on a risk based approach. We have we have a very rigid methodology. Our uh, skill set related to the accuracy of data management, uh, uh, control of processes, uh, our expertise in compliance. I think that are all relevant uh, that are uh, so uh, 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 they are all skills said that today are relevant when we talk about uh, the climate change uh, climate change risk so i think that uh, we should promote a mutual exchange of knowledge uh, with the other technical teams in our organization we can learn from them and we can pass them uh, our approach and our methodology and uh, finally i think that uh, as uh, this topic is really very popular now no it's a trendy topic not only in, in the business but in the world i think i think there are many people that are uh, uh, developing a personal interest for this uh, uh, for this topic and i think that in our teams we all have people that are more committed uh, to this topic if so i think that we should uh, uh, help these people uh, to mm -hmm. follow their uh, okay. They, they, they trained their intention and to help them to go in, into this direction. I think that it will be more easy for them to learn faster and to become more expert. And this can be helpful for them, for their personal development mm -hmm. and for the team in order right. to be a stronger team in the future. Well, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, you're saying, you know, start from what you have and uh, and then accomplish exactly. the opportunity as a, as it's um, uh, you know more relevant, Alberto, uh, your perception on this topic of skill set. Yeah, I, I wish we had all the all the all the technical know how for all the many different type of audits that we do. However, we have to be realistic, and we know that that's difficult to to achieve. Even if if that knowledge exists in the market, if the if the subject of the issue is on fashion, it's going to be very expensive resources. And these resources will normally go to the places where they feel they can take more advantage. And in this case, it would be the business, the business side. So, I mean, I, I, in, in this regard, I, I follow a, a realistic approach. Of course, we have to develop in-house knowledge. But in the meantime, I'm sure that we in all our organizations, we already have that knowledge in other areas. So at this point of time, for me, the, the, most, uh, the most efficient uh, lever is the figure of the guest auditor. That's the balance that can help us gain that internal uh, know-how, keep it inside, not outsource it, so, and then pay for money for it. We keep it inside, um, but, and also we can learn, but also, we, as you said before, uh, we have an, a, access to many different places of the organization that other areas can't. So it's also a win-win situation for these people or these areas in which we act them as ambassadors for them to develop, a, to develop their activities at a lower level more than their specific technical area. What a wonderful, pragmatic suggestion for efficient problem solving in the short term. Uh, have we received any questions from the audience? Okay. All right, so it's three. Uh, we have one for Roberto. Is the assurance provider the same as the external auditor? So you use another firm. Uh, be very, very sharp in the response. At the moment, it's a different company. Uh, and at the moment, we don't know in the future if the requirements uh, will ask us to have the same or a different one. At the moment, they are two different companies, one for the, for the financial assurance and a different external audit company for the sustainability reporting assurance. Okay, I will ask maybe Svilena, if you don't mind, uh, to comment about the topic of new regulation coming in, um, maybe to try as there's a question or maybe a group of questions on this. Uh, what's, the, what's the news uh, on this front and how this will impact our, our attention to the matter going forward? 
Well, it, it needs to, based on uh, what organizations you, you work for, whether you're w within the scope of the directive, then uh, you should practically analyze uh, how this will affect uh, the operations. Um, is the organization ready to Im import all of the requirements? For example, very often there is no organization that is set up or there is a lack of data. So you need to know what are um, what is the expected output and KPIs that you need to disclose mm -hmm. in order to be able to collect this information and organize the process in a way that it's timely ready. Yeah, I think I think there is also a comment by my side on this topic. Uh, there's new regulation coming in. Uh, there's new directives coming from the European Union. Uh, and we have to understand that uh, this is a topic that uh, going forward will, uh, will impact more and more our regulatory, our reporting requirements. So to me, I think this is a, a, good, a good way of anticipating what will be the value that boards will see in us in the future. They will see us as assurance providers going forward to ensure that we are in line with uh, those requirements. So we have been spending a lot of time in talking about the importance of taking action. But now maybe it's time to take action because we need time as a profession to get to the level of maturity which is required to properly uh, give value and ensure that we give value to board and management. So uh, when there was no regulation or limited regulation, fine, it's a nice to have. Now going forward in three, four years time, uh, this will be, you know, a must for us. And so uh, it's a matter of really moving into action, moving into transitioning to a new phase uh, where we are all aware about the importance of the topic now, and we need to find practical solutions and factor things in our audit plans. Maybe I will use this as a closure comment because the other the other questions uh, may relate to more confidential aspects of the companies we have in the panel today. And uh, maybe Pascal, if you agree, uh, conscious of time, um, I will try to maybe crystallize a few takeaways from the discussion today. Uh, which before. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Pascal, are you there? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Michele. Uh, go, go ahead. Uh, just if I may, two small things, because there are a lot of questions in the chat. So you will receive the recording, the key messages uh, very soon next week. Give you back the floor for the conclusion. OK, good, good, good. So we have had the time today to uh, steal one hour to our busy agendas to jointly discuss uh, as European auditors uh, about a topic that we all feel is common as important to all of us and many of us are uh, not there at the level of maturity that Roberto, Svilena and Alberto were able to properly articulate today. Uh, I think to me the key takeaways is uh, uh, time for us to raise hands up with uh, management if we believe our organization is not properly thinking about uh, this emerging risk. Uh, play our wake-up call, that's our duty and responsibility. Uh, my second key takeaway is uh, time for us all to start thinking about how to factor climate change and environmental sustainability in our audit plans. We have seen from the experience of Svilena, Alberto and Roberto, there are many different ways of looking at this, maybe according to the level of maturity of companies. Um, we should pick up solutions according to the level of maturity of internal audit and the level of maturity of the organization. Um, and to me, the last comment is uh, time to move from uh, talking about the need to take action uh, to a new step, which is uh, taking action. Uh, time is a variable. Uh, regulatory pressures will be increasing. 
uh, board's expectations will be increasing, management expectations will be increasing, and so we need to ensure that we, we use properly the time to develop the knowledge skill set to properly opine on this matter when this will be a crucial way, a crucial critical to success factor for internal auditing. Now, this is the way I will close uh, uh, the round table and uh, um, I will I will end over to you, Pascal, for the last greetings. Th thank you, Michele. Th thank you to you and to all the speakers for the very interesting discussion on this very hot topic. I'm sure we'll have other webinars, uh, may maybe when the new regulation will be uh, coming from, from, the, from Europe, so hopefully before the end of the year. And last but not the least, so for the CPE, the Slido will be open until the end of the day today so that you have plenty of time to fill in the document and to receive it. So thank you very much. Have a good day and congratulations for the timing. Just on time. Thank you. Thank you all. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good afternoon Bye. and good luck.